Her achievements include being the first woman to win a Nobel Prize, the first person to win Nobel Prize twice, and the only person to win a Nobel Prize in two scientific fields. Marie Curie was born Maria Sklodowska on November 7, 1867, to a family of prominent educators in Warsaw, in what was the Kingdom of Poland, part of the Russian Empire. Marie Curie was the youngest of five children in her family. Her father, Lady Sklodowski, was a physics and mathematics instructor, and her mother, Bronislawa Sklodowski, was a headmistress at a prestigious Warsaw boarding school for girls. Her family lost their property and fortunes through patriotic involvement in Polish national uprising aimed at restoring Poland's independence. The family also lost money due to bad investment and eventually chose to supplement their income by lodging boys in their house. Curie lost her mother in May 1878 when she was 10 years old. Less than three years earlier, Maria's oldest sibling, Zofia, had died of typhus contracted from a border. The deaths of Maria's mother and sister caused her to give up Catholicism and become agnostic. Despite financial struggles and the loss of family members, Curie excelled in her studies. She graduated on 12 June 1883 with a gold medal. Unable to enroll in a regular institution of higher education because she was a woman, she and her sister Bronislawa enrolled in the Clandestine Flying University, a Polish patriotic institution of higher learning that admitted women students. Her sister then left for medical school in Paris. Maria hoped to eventually join her. Maria made an agreement with her sister, Bronislawa, that she would give her financial assistance during her studies in Paris, in exchange for a similar assistance two years later. In connection to this, Maria worked as a tutor, a governess, and also studied in her spare time. While working for the Zorowskis, who were relatives of her father, she fell in love with their son, Kazimir Zorowski, who will later be a mathematician. His parents rejected the idea of his son marrying the penniless relative and Kazimierz was unable to oppose them. It is said that, as an old man, he would sit contemplatively before the statue of Maria that had been erected in 1935 before the Radium Institute, which she had founded. In late 1891, Maria left Poland to join her sister in Paris, where she used the name Marie. She enrolled at the University of Paris, where she studied physics, chemistry, and mathematics. At first, she lived at the home of her sister, who was now married before renting an attic closer to the university. She focused so hard on her studies that she sometimes forgot to eat. In 1893, she was awarded a degree in physics, and then later another one in mathematics. That same year, Pierre Curie came into her life. It was their mutual interest in science that drew them together. Pierre Curie was a well-known French physicist. They were introduced by a mutual friend who had learned that Marie was looking for a laboratory space for her research and Pierre Curie headed a laboratory at the School of Industrial Physics. Their mutual passion for science brought them increasingly closer and they began to develop feelings for one another. Eventually, Pierre Curie proposed to her, but at first Marie did not accept as she was still planning to go back to her native country. In 1894, during summer break, Marie returned to Warsaw, where she visited her family. She was still hoping that she would be able to work in her chosen field in Poland but Krakow University denied her a job as a professor because she was a woman. A letter from Pierre convinced her to return to Paris to pursue a PhD. On 26 July 1895, they were married in Sicco. Neither wanted a religious service. Curie's dark blue outfit, worn instead of a bridal gown, would serve her for many years as a laboratory outfit. Later, they gave birth to two daughters, Irene and Eve. In Pierre, Marie had found a partner in life and in science. In June 1903, Marie Curie would earn her Doctorate of Science, becoming the first woman in France to receive a doctoral degree. In 1895, Wilhelm Röntgen discovered the existence of X-rays, though the mechanism behind their production was not yet understood. In 1896, Henri Becquerel discovered that uranium salts emitted rays that resembled X-rays in their penetrating power. Influenced by these two important discoveries, Curie decided to look into uranium rays as a possible field of research for her thesis. She used an electrometer that her husband and his brother had developed to measure radioactivity in many samples. Curie's systematic studies included two uranium minerals, pitchblende and torbernite. Her electrometer showed that pitchblende was four times as active as uranium itself. In 1898, 
Curie and her husband published a joint paper announcing the existence of an element named polonium in honor of her native Poland and a second element, which they named radium from the Latin word ray. In the course of their research, they also coined the word radioactivity. In December 1903, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences awarded Pierre Curie, Marie Curie, and Henri Becquerel the Nobel Prize in Physics for their extraordinary joint research on the radiation phenomena. At first, the committee had intended to honor only Pierre Curie and Henri Becquerel, but a committee member, Swedish mathematician Magnus Gosta Mittig Leffler, alerted Pierre of the situation, and after Pierre Curie's complaint, Marie's name was added to the nomination. Marie Curie became the first woman to be awarded a Nobel Prize. Curie and her husband declined to go to Stockholm to receive the prize in person. They were too busy with their work, and Pierre Curie was feeling increasingly ill. On a rainy day in April 1906, Pierre Curie was killed in a road accident, walking across the Rue Dauphine. He was struck by a horse-drawn vehicle and fell under its wheels, fracturing his skull and killing him instantly. Curie was devastated by her husband's death. She immersed herself in her research. On the 13th of May, 1906, the physics department of the University of Paris decided to retain the chair that had been created for her late husband and offer it to Marie. She accepted it, and she became the first woman to be a professor at the University of Paris. In 1910, Curie succeeded in isolating radium. She also defined an international standard for radioactive emissions, Curie. In 1911, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences awarded Marie Curie the second Nobel Prize for Chemistry for the isolation of pure radium. She became the first person to win or share two Nobel Prizes in two different fields. Curie's second Nobel Prize enabled her to persuade the French government to support the Radium Institute, built in 1914, where research was conducted in chemistry, physics, and medicine. The Institute's development was interrupted by the coming war, most researchers were drafted into the French army. After the war started, she attempted to donate her gold Nobel Prize medals to the war effort, but the French National Bank refused to accept them. She did buy war bonds, using her Nobel Prize money. During World War I, Curie recognized that wounded soldiers were best served if operated upon as soon as possible. After a quick study of radiology, anatomy, and automotive mechanics, she procured X-ray equipment, vehicles, and auxiliary generators, and she developed mobile radiography units, which came to be popularly known as Petite Curie. It is estimated that over a million wounded soldiers were treated with her X-ray units. Despite all her humanitarian contributions to the French war effort, Curie never received any formal recognition from the French government. In 1921, she was welcomed triumphantly when she toured the United States to raise funds for research on radium. Mrs. William Brown Melanie, after interviewing Curie, created a Marie Curie radium fund and raised money to buy radium, publicizing her trip. In that same year, U.S. President Warren Gamaliel Harding received her at the White House to present her with one gram of radium collected in the United States, and the First Lady praised her as an example of a professional achiever who was also a supportive wife. Recognizing her growing fame abroad, and embarrassed by the fact that she had no French official distinctions to wear in public, the French government offered her a Legion of Honor award, but she refused. Led by Curie, the Radium Institute produced four more Nobel Prize winners, including her daughter Irene Joliot Curie and her son-in-law, Frédéric Joliot Curie. In August 1922, Marie Curie became a member of the League of Nations' newly created International Committee on Intellectual Cooperation, she sat on the committee until 1934. In 1923, she wrote a biography of her late husband, titled Pierre Curie. In 1925, she visited Poland to participate in a ceremony laying the foundations for Warsaw's Radium Institute. Her second American tour, in 1929, succeeded in equipping the Warsaw Radium Institute with radium. The institute opened in 1932, with her sister Bronisława as its director. However, these benefits to humanity may have come at a high personal cost. Marie Curie died in July 1934, at the age of 66 from a plastic anemia, believed to have been contracted from her long-term exposure to radiation, causing damage to her bone marrow. She was interred at the cemetery in Sceaux, 
alongside her husband Pierre. Sixty years later, in 1995, in honor of their achievements, the remains of both were transferred to the Paris Pantheon, a city building in Paris that currently holds the remains of many great French citizens. Their remains were sealed in a lead lining because of the radioactivity. Her papers are also kept in lead lined boxes and those who wish to consult them must wear protective clothing. Her discoveries in radiation launched a new era, unearthing some of science's greatest secrets. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more informative content.